Welcome everyone, Kumakala here. This is Elite Dangerous. This game came out in 2014, December. Towards the end of 2014. Um, it's a space sim. Uh, this game is one of the two major space sims that has been kickstarted over the past uh, little while. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I discovered this game too late to be part of the Kickstarter, but I have picked it up after the game released, and I gotta say, it's fun as heck. Um, I really enjoy it. One of the things that this game is a little bit notorious about is a high learning curve when it comes to flying these ships. And so, in my 200 hours or so of flight time, I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over and do a tutorial on how to fly in this game. Now, first of all, there's some settings uh, that we're going to change, and this is um, for using a keyboard and mouse. And it's just some optional controls that I prefer. So let's go ahead and scroll on down. We're going to controls. Controls that we're looking for are in the section flight miscellaneous down here we have toggle frame shift drive and I've added in um, enable frame shift drive to super cruise I've added left shift plus J for this and enable frame shift drive to hyperspace is left control plus J I just prefer these uh, normally it's just J that's active but by enabling this to Super Cruise, I can actually jump to Super Cruise and um, not have to worry about jumping to hyperspace by accident. Um, because J, this will work for both Super Cruise and hyperspace. If you don't have another solar system uh, targeted, then you'll jump into Super Cruise. If you do have another solar system targeted and you hit J, it'll jump into hyperspace. You don't always necessarily want that to happen. Another setting that I've set up is target next system in route. And I set this to the letter O. And I think those are the only changes that I made to this. Everything else is on its default. Um, you may want to spend a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with some of the controls. And if you don't, that's fine. I will be running through the controls as I jump into the game. But let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to jump into a private game. And so we're going to go start and solo play. Now, I started playing this a little bit and was recording and the game crashed on me while I was recording. So I may be out in space floating around in my ship. I have no idea. Uh, if I'm actually at a loading dock, I'll be rather pleased as well because that's where I'd like to start. This video is just going to give you a quick rundown of the controls. And it looks like I'm floating in space. Alright, there are four screens that you need to be aware of when you're playing this game. And they're bound to one, two, three, and four, right across to the top of your numbers. So number one pulls up your left panel. Number two pulls up your communications panel. Number three pulls up your sensors. And number four pulls up your right panel. Now I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth on what these are and what they contain. Let's just really quick go over the basics of how to navigate through them. W, A, S, and D allow you to move your icon around or your uh, selection around. And then you can use Q and E to switch between the different tabs that you have. So S is down, W is up, A is left, D is right, and then if you want to select something, spacebar allows you to do that. Alright, and let's go ahead and look over here on the right screen. Here we've got reputation, um, among other things. It also has your rank in the different areas. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have deleted my save game. I was I was pretty far into the game. I think I had a net worth of around 60 million credits. While it's not super significant, 
you start out with 1,000 credits and you have to build your way up from there. And uh, I did it through bounty hunting, mostly a little bit of trading. And bounty hunting is my preferred method. Anyway, when you're looking at one of these screens that has multiple tabs like this, you can use um, A and D to switch between them. And you can scroll up and down using W and S. Again, Q and E allow you to switch between these different groups. And yeah, that should be good. Um, like I said, later I'll go into more detail. Another one more thing that you're going to need to know about is the arrow keys. Um, I'm not talking about the arrow keys that are on your numpad. I'm talking about the standalone arrow keys that are usually between the um, enter and your numpad. Um, not all keyboards have them. Uh, if yours don't, doesn't, that's fine. You'll have to rebind these keys elsewhere. But the up, down, left, and right, uh, they control your power distribution now. If you look at the sensors right here in the middle, to the right of that, you will see your ship, a basic hologram representation of it with several rings around it. Those are your shields. And just to the right of that, you will have your power distribution. Now, if I were to hit left, I would allocate slightly more power to systems. Hit left again allocate all four pips over to systems and you'll see that I still have a little bit in my engines and my weapons. Now let's say I wanted to put some more power to my engines I could hit that and it'll draw some from systems, some from weapons. Hit it up again. Now we've got a balance load between systems and engines and I can hit down and it'll balance it across all three different areas. And so one of the things I do I, I prefer lasers as my main weapon type and that requires um, power to your weapons to both fire the lasers and also to cool them down. And so when I'm in combat and I'm not going to, like I'm going to be flying at a fairly consistent speed, I'm not going to be doing a lot of uh, boosting or anything like that, what I'll do is I'll actually dump everything into systems really quick and then weapons. And this means that my shields will still recharge, my weapons will recharge as fast as they possibly can and it just works out pretty good that way. Um, I really didn't want to show you this in this part but I'll go ahead and give you a rundown of it. You've got your basic flight controls. W and S control your throttle so W is throttle forward. And I just hit X. X actually zeroes out your throttle so if you're going in reverse or forward and you hit X it'll just return you to zero. S actually reverses and again, I hit X to zero it out. Um, A and D, these allow you to rotate around the Y axis. And so your, your ship remains flat. You're not tipping or rolling or anything. You're actually just rotating in place left and right. So that's A. And that's D. And right there, I moved the mouse a little bit. You saw it cause an arrow. And this allows you to control your pitch, which is up and down, and your roll, which is left and right. Now, as you can see, we've got a little plant over here. Another thing that you may enjoy, um, if, if you don't have one, this, this game is designed um, for, for virtual reality. It supports like Oculus Rift and other headsets like that. Um, so it allows you to look around your ship and your cockpit. Uh, clicking the middle or the mouse wheel enters free look mode and you can actually look around your ship using the mouse. Um, I don't do it a whole lot but I do every now and again and you see this game is designed for use with a hands-on throttle and stick I believe that's what it stands for it's a HOTAS Hotas. I used one, but I found that I was having better results using a keyboard and mouse. Now, two other flight controls that you need to know about. We already went over your throttle, which is W and S. You have your rotate left and right, which is A and D. And you have thrust. Now, thrust causes you to move in a straight line. 
So you have thrust left and right, which is Q and E, so thrust left, you hold down Q, and your ship just slides to the left. Hold down E, your ship slides to the right. You also have thrust up and down, vertical thrust. R is for vertical up, and F is for vertical down. Now, in, out in space like this, it's difficult to see a difference between this. So let's actually select the dock that's near here. We're going to lock the target. And then I'm going to rotate the ship to look at it. So if you look at the sensors right there, you see that there's brackets around one of the targets. And it's upside down. So this means that I am inverted compared to that. So if I roll the ship around like this and try to line up that little circle at the bottom of this right behind my ship because you'll see that little triangle halfway in the middle of your sensors. Um, triangle right in the middle that is your ship and then you've got sort of like a 45 degree angle in front of you that is your viewable area. The circle represents where the space station actually is. The triangle and the line down to that circle represents um, how our altitude compared to that station. So we're a little bit higher than the station, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pitch up. And that brings the circle in front of us. And as I continue to pitch up, eventually brings the triangle directly in front of us and now our ship is actually angled just about right to point at this space station and some very gentle controls to the mouse to stop my roll and let's go ahead and fly towards it now one thing you'll notice that we've got this little blue bar on our um, throttle now you want to keep um, when you're flying around you're actually going to be performing maneuvers like turning or strafing using your different thrust directions you're going to want to keep your throttle in the middle of this blue bar because it provides the optimal turn rate so as you see my ship rotates pretty quick but if I were to come to a complete stop and try to do that same rotation it's slower. It doesn't seem significantly slower because this is actually a pretty agile ship, but if you're flying like an Anaconda or something that happens to be the biggest ship in the game that I know of, if you're flying an Anaconda, it can take you a full 30 seconds to rotate your ship around if you're sitting at a dead stop. And so sometimes it's a good idea to have some speed going. Now let's go ahead and hit one, and we're going to actually request docking with this station. Um, I know this video is getting a little bit long, I apologize, but I just want to run through this pretty quick. The next video I'm going to over run over Docking some more. Denied. Docking request denied. Let's request it again. Docking request granted. Alright, now they have an open spot. You'll see that now we have a proceed landing pad 1 and we have 10 minutes to fly over there and land on it. You see this little yellow patch right here? These are landing pads. I don't know if this is actually number one. I don't think so. It looks to be a medium landing pad. And what I'm doing is I'm holding down E to rotate the ship or actually to strafe. Yeah, it looks like it is for another ship. So I'm going to rotate my ship, roll it, and then press R. And I'll use pitch to sort of rotate my ship and, and circle strafe around this station. And you'll see that we've got number one right over here. Now you do have a specific direction that you need to approach the landing pad from. And you'll notice that the one actually happens to be on the right hand side of this square. Let's fly a little bit closer and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
Alright, zero out our speed. And you'll see that the one is over on this side of the pad. Now over here it's kind of difficult to tell but there is a control tower and a um, sort of a command center. And over on this side it's difficult to tell because of lighting. There's a ramp. And so what you want to do when you come in to land, you want to come in from the ramp side and center your ship right in the middle of that and then touch down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strafe to the left and I'm going to be tapping D so that I circle strafe. Oh, I went a little bit too far. Let's correct. And later on, I'll show you guys how to do fast landings, but I just want to give you a basic idea of how it is. So we're going to accelerate slightly. Let's go ahead and lower our landing gear. We'll do that by pressing L. And we'll use some quick taps to sort of center our ship in the middle line. You'll see that we're coming down over the ramp. You don't want to come down too sharp. And once you get it about centered, you're going to go ahead and bring yourself to a full stop. You'll see that you have a little red circle underneath your ship, and you've got a circle on the landing pad. You want to try to get yourself centered on that as much as possible. If it's all blue like that, you're good. As you see, I, I slid over to the right, and now I'm no longer centered on it. I can go ahead, or I, I slid over to the left. And so now we're centered on it again, and I just tap F a few times to lower myself down onto the pad. And Engines there we go. Disengaged. We've landed. This is a really slow landing, but I wanted to give you a basic idea of what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you taking off from a station. I'm also going to show you docking at a different station. Um, there's stations that orbit planets, and they have a slot opening that you have to fly your ship through to get into the station and I've struggled when I first started playing this game figuring out where that slot's located but I'm going to give you some tips and some ideas on how to approach the station so that you're always facing the slot alright so let's go ahead and enter the hangar and that'll be it for this part thank you all for watching tune to the next part and I'll give you a quick rundown of some of the sta station services and then um that shouldn't take too long and then we'll give a quick rundown on actually flying to another location in the same solar system and docking um, so yeah I'll see you guys in a few minutes bye